Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another cosplay reveal video. This is only my second cosplay video I've released on the channel, but there will definitely be more on the way. For those of you who don't know, over on Instagram a while ago I released the pictures of the Mando cosplay as well as the 89 Batman cosplay. Go ahead and check out the link to my Instagram down in the description below. Now basically how this is going to work is as you can see in front of you right here we have a majority of the Mandalorian cosplay pieces. We're going to be taking a look at the various components then at the end of the video we'll be taking a look at the video shoot that we did for the cosplay out in the wild. You can see how it performs, how it looks when I'm moving around. It's not just going to be me standing there. You'll be able to get a little bit of a feel of how the cosplay does work. And eventually, when we are able to go back to cons, I do plan on wearing the Season 1 Mandalorian cosplay and doing some vlog footage of that as well. So stay tuned to the second channel, Justin Steph. What we are going to do now, though, is get all of this stuff out of the way and get started by looking at the helmet. And here we have the Mandalorian bucket. Now you've already seen this, I've done a full review on the Inovos Mandalorian helmet. Why are we looking at it again? Well, I just wanted to let you know which one specifically it was that I used for the cosplay. It's this, the Inovos helmet. It's beautiful, it's heavy, it's made out of fiberglass, the visor is double-walled. Trust me, out in the sunlight you can't actually see a face behind the visor. It looks something like that. Now I will be upgrading or switching the helmet to a custom one by someone known as Jake Snakes Cosplay on Instagram. It will be a fully custom modeled 3D printed and then painted helmet that I'll be using for my Season 2 Beskar Mando cosplay, so stay tuned for that. But I'll be using the Anovos for Season 1 for now, while the other one is in the process of being prepared. But I have to say, this Anovos helmet is absolutely gorgeous. It's just a little bit too pricey to be taking out to cons and wearing in the wild, and maybe slightly too heavy. Your neck definitely gets sore. This one does have a significant weight to it, so I cannot wait to see my new lighter weight version. Now of course, for Mando, weapons are part of his religion, so I wanted to get the pistol just right. I started off with this one right here. This was made by Nathan, aka NAB Cosplay. He's been on the channel before, you've seen him on live streams, and he's definitely helped me pose the new figures in the display, so definitely stay tuned to an upcoming collection tour. By the way, all of the links to the various makers will be in the description below, so if you want something fabricated, definitely hit them up. But I wanted something slightly chunkier than this because the holster that I got for my suit was slightly too big. This pistol is beautiful and it's proportionate and it looks great, it's super nicely sculpted and painted, but it's slightly too small for me personally. So, therefore, I reached out to another maker who goes by Nightlight Films. That's Night with a K. This one is a bit of a chunkier, beefier boy, and it's also painted exquisitely. I really love the dry brushing effect, and the black and the silver really does pop. You can also see that it does have a nice sight at the top there. It's also 3D printed, and it's been finished to a really nice standard. You can see a bit of an oil stain over the top to give it that effect that it kind of looks like metal. They are both really good options for Mandalorian handguns. I actually did work once again with Nightlight Films on making the Ambon Phase Pulse Rifle. That will be revealed in the next cosplay video being the Beskar Mando one, so do stay tuned for that. But for now, I really like both options for the pistols. Now we'll try and breeze through the soft good components because they are a little bit boring. It's literally just a grey shirt. The interesting thing though is it zips up the back there and you do have a flap that goes over the top that nicely covers it. It also does have a longer neck so it tucks up underneath the helmet. This came as part of the package deal with X Cosa. It's spelt how it sounds. They're also known as X Costume. The link will be in the description below, but these soft goods all came with the various hard resin casted armor pieces. There were a couple of issues though. It was extremely clean. You can see a bunch of weathering and dirt and grime in the seams here. 
I actually did that with an airbrush and some acrylic paint. You can see I did it pretty much on all of the high traffic areas down here at the joints where you'd expect some dirt to gather and collect and the seams along there as well. I wanted to give it a little bit more of a dirtier look, especially under the armpits there, and it kind of just brings it to life. Without doing that, just out of the box, it is going to look a little bit boring, I do warn you. So I do recommend doing a little bit of weathering, at least to the shirt, when you get it. Next up we do have the cummerbund and I did the exact same thing here. You can see some weathering, some brown airbrushing around the bottom and around the edges. You may be asking what I used for reference. Well, I'm glad you did. I literally got my Hot Toys Durasteel Mando out and I pretty much copied the weathering patterns on him to get it to look how I wanted. Now the issue with this one is it's slightly too big so I did have to attach my own Velcro strap at the back here it's quite crudely done, but you won't ever see it, so I didn't really worry too much. And some Velcro pads to attach the belt, because the belt is a pleather style material with real metal hardware, it tends to sag. So I did attach some Velcro on the front here, it's literally just adhesive Velcro. If you give this stuff some time to really stick on there and be nice and sturdy, it shouldn't come off when you are peeling this stuff off. Just be careful, hold it down, and then remove the belt, and you should be perfectly fine. But literally, all I did was dilute some acrylic paint in the airbrush and go around all the seams. In my opinion, it's something that's absolutely essential. You can see some splotches here and there, but all of that is covered up anyway, so it's not a huge deal. I was a little bit annoyed when I did it at the time, granted, but when you have it all on, it's something that is pretty much well and truly hidden. Now, it's going to be quite hard to show you the cape, on camera. You'll have to wait till the end of the video and see me sort of walking around with it, but when it arrived it was super clean. So what I did was I got a bucket, half filled it with water, then popped in some black shoe polish. I then put the cape in and swished it all around, then after that I washed it out. It gave it this sort of slightly dirty look that I was really after. This cape is a really soft, supple material. It kind of feels like a nice throw blanket that you'd use on your couch or your bed. Not exactly the perfect material for Mando's cape, granted, but still, it does work. Now, I also took a knife to it, and I cut a few holes in the bottom, and I tatted up the edges, because it's not a pristine cape in the show. I wanted to give it a little bit more of a rough and ready look. As you can see, looks all kinds of nasty, but that's exactly what I was going for. You can do that, you can also do a little bit more weathering down the bottom. Now, of course, for the top, they've done a pretty nice job of sewing it together. It's technically supposed to sort of clip over his shoulder, then that part goes over, then this goes around the front. You can make that happen, but it's a little bit cumbersome to do so. I would have liked some press stud sort of buttons on the front here so you can connect it to the armor. That may be something that I modify sometime in the near future. Now the gloves were a fun and interesting challenge because they arrived being two separate pieces, this black part and an underglove. But the underglove wasn't this one, this material that you see in front of you right here. It was literally a fabric orange glove it wasn't going to work. So of course I went to my local hardware store known as Bunnings. You can go to Home Timber and Hardware, I'm sure they'll have work gloves just the same. These are proper leather work gloves. They were a little bit too clean, they were super vibrant yellow like you can see down here. So I did the same trick. I got some nice black acrylic, watered it down and did a wash over the top. I also sanded the entire surface to give it a little bit more of a rough and ready look. You can also see on the top here there is some nice weathering. I did that with the airbrush. I put it on a very low PSI and then used the spackling tech technique to get it to look like this. I also sanded the edges of the blue triangles here just because I didn't want it to look pristine. You can see both aren't identical. I've wiped away some of the dirt and grime so it's collected in the edges there. They're both different and honestly, these might just be some of my favorite parts, as simple as they are, of the cosplay. Now I do want to talk about two more components that I didn't use from the x Cosa set, and it's these two pieces. These were both made and 3D printed by Nathan, NAB Cosplay once again. They're really nicely done, they're actually made for his personal Mando cosplay, but he since decided to switch it up, to upgrade a little bit, so he passed these on to me. They're really nice, sturdy pieces. They are exceptionally well painted. You can see that it's not just a one-tone color palette. I've also gone in with some Molotow Chrome in the edges just to give it a little bit of a glint of silver. 
underneath. It doesn't show up so well on the 3D printed parts, but when we get to the resin armor, you really can see it. These cartridges as well were 3D printed by Nathan. An upgrade that I'm willing to do or wanting to do in the future is get proper metal ones. I've seen them on Etsy and I will be doing it. You can also see these pleather straps that go around the front there. I took some sandpaper and some Tamiya weathering powder to these pieces right here just to give it a little bit more of a depth to it. It was just overall relatively flat. You can see dirt and grime collected in the edges there. This is a really awesome piece and I'm super glad Nathan had one. Now this other piece, same story. I took some sandpaper and some Tamiya weathering powder and kind of went crazy all over the entire thing. I also did the black wash trick and went over the brown just to give it a little bit more dimensionality. I also did some more weathering on this component here and I airbrushed a little bit over the top as well. You can see some subtle fading here and there. I really like the way it looks. Nathan did an amazing job. I'm not trying to discredit his work by any means, but I just made a few little tweaks, in my opinion, that made it a little bit nicer. I'm sorry, Nathan, you still did really darn good work, but I just wanted to put my own personal stamp on this piece. Next up, I do want to talk about the boots. I am super happy with how these turned out. When I got them off eBay and they turned up, they were just too clean. They were super pristine. They didn't look this color at all. They were a much lighter brown and these sections were super vibrant gray. I've since found out that these aren't actually accurate to the Durasteel look for Mando, whose boots were slightly different. These are more accurate to the Beskar look, but that's fine. I'll be using these with the Beskar one anyway, so now I have a pair of boots that are interchangeable between the two. Now you may be asking what I did to these. Well, first things first, I took some really rough sandpaper and went to town all over the entire thing. For those of you who don't know, if it's a super slick surface, the paint and the dirt and the grime won't stick to it. Of course, that's simulated dirt and grime, that's acrylic paint and shoe polish. If you're using real dirt and grime, it may start to smell and get a little bit nasty. You want it to look dirty, but not actually be dirty. That's just some food for thought. So sandpaper, then some acrylic paint wash over the top, and then some Tamiya weathering powder. The next step might surprise you, but I got some Tamiya flat matte spray, some sealant, and I went over the entire thing because I didn't want it to appear glossy. That step, that very last step, brought this entire thing to life. I am now in love with these boots. They look so darn good. They look like proper aged boots. I also got my airbrush and went down all of the crevices with some acrylic black. It gives it this nice sort of feathering effect and it really does mimic aged leather. I might be tooting my own horn here just a little bit, but honestly, I am in love with how these boots turned out. Next up, we have another component which is going to be a little bit challenging to show you on camera. We may as well start with the bottom half first. Don't worry, you will see me wearing it again at the end of the video. But basically, what I did here was the exact same process as the boots. This was the color it came in originally. Not bad by any means, you can see some subtle sort of wear and tear over it, but I wanted it to be really dirty and really grimy. So again, I took the sandpaper and I went to town. I sanded the entire thing back, especially paying attention to the edges because you want the edges to be extra dirty and extra rough. These buckles were also super vibrant chrome. You can see the shine there because they're real metal. It just makes sense. I scuffed those as well. Then I went in with my black acrylic wash and you can see some areas aren't quite covered. That's because this pouch pieces can slide around and cover them up. I also did the edges with the airbrush just like I did with the other components. Then the Tamiya weathering powder and finally the Tamiya matte finisher, the spray that gives it this nice weathered matte look. Now these canisters are the ones that came in the x Cosa set. They are made of resin and you can see they are slightly dirty. I also did the exact same thing to them. They had a black wash that just kind of brings them to life a little bit. Now moving around to the side here, you can see the set does come with the detonators. They come pre-weathered and they look really good, except they kind of like to fall out all the time. So I applied some Velcro in the back, that way when you tuck them 
them in, they won't be falling out. The only unfortunate thing is, they're just for show. They don't come out, you can't use them, there's no lights or anything like that, but for me personally, that's perfectly fine. I won't be posing using those. Now the way it attaches is quite interesting. There are a couple of clips. This one in the show is meant for the rifle, but here they actually use it to attach the back of the strap here. I'm gonna have to wait and see how I go about attaching my Ambon Phase Pulse Rifle to this harness. I may need to switch the harness out for something else, but for now, I really like the way it looks. It's simple and it definitely does the job. It functions, it's got a holster for the pistol, and for me personally, right now with my first iteration of the Mando cosplay, this will definitely work. Now we're starting to get to the meat and potatoes, some of the armor components. These are of course the gauntlets. These came honestly not too badly painted. The only issue was all over the entire surface there were these little silver squiggles, kind of like they were trying to do this dry brushing effect but they'd failed miserably. It was entirely covering this whole piece. The same with the rest of the armor. So the first thing I had to do, which was super unfortunate, was get some isopropyl alcohol and some methylated spirits and rub off all of the silver paint. But honestly, I think it's all the better for it. The weathering effect that's been left is nice and subtle. You can see this really nice airbrushing of black here and there. And in the sort of scratches and crevices, I put some Molotov Chrome so it does shine when the light catches it. I did that for both of the gauntlets. They both will require a little bit of work. The set is not 100% perfect out of the box. I chromed this, I chromed this piece here as well, and again, I had to take off all of the silver squiggles. Now the way this actually attaches to your arm is quite straightforward. There's one of these pull straps with a little clasp, you literally just open that up and then they can spring open. You can pop it on your arm and then you can subsequently, of course, tighten it. Getting into a Mando costume is definitely a two-person job, so make sure you have someone on hand to help get you into the cosplay because otherwise it's going to be relatively tricky. Now the cool thing about these pieces is they aren't 3D printed, they are resin, which means they are super sturdy and they are super hardy, so you shouldn't have any issues with breaking them even if you do drop them once or twice. Please be careful, don't drop your Mando pieces, but if you do, you should be okay because they are nice and hardy pieces. That's one of the reasons why I was attracted to the x Cosa set over 3D printing my own, was just because of the molded and casted resin pieces that are a little bit more sturdy. Now we won't really be going in depth on the pants because they are literally the exact same as the jacket, but I do want to show you the two armor plates. These things look absolutely glorious. They also had the silver squiggles all over, so I had to take the same chemicals and remove them as I did with the gauntlets, but once you do, they come up looking sensational. You can also see I do have that Molotov chrome in the scratches. It just brings the thing to life, in my personal opinion. It looks really good. I'm now loving the way these look. The black splotches on both panels might be a little bit too intentional for me personally. I might have to go in and smooth them out a little bit. But trust me, in person, they look really good. Now the way they actually attach to the pants is quite interesting. There are a bunch of strings and then subsequently D-rings on the back of the panels as you can see right there. You tie the strings around the D-rings and then that will do the job. Now up here on the belt, there are these side sections. There's two, there's one on either side. I also weathered the heck out of these. These were super pristine and clean. So I took the sandpaper and then I did the airbrushing and then I did the blackwash. And then finally, the matte spray to give it this really nice, dirtied, weathered look. Now the belt doesn't actually come with the set, you will have to get your own. This is just a workman's belt. I got it from the exact same store, being Bunnings Warehouse, that I got the gloves from. But overall, I'm really impressed with all of the super rigid and hard armor pieces in the set. Now a small but very important component is the knee guard. This of course will be integral to the season 2 Mando appearance and I really like how they've done it. The only issue is these side pieces, the darts, are a little bit too short. They should come out to about here. But they are affixed with real metal hardware so technically you could undo these nuts 
and then maybe put on some custom ones, your very own different versions. You can see I have chromed them as well, they shine up a treat, and I've done the same thing to all of the scratches there. This is incredibly nicely weathered, you can see a bunch of scratching over the top, some black as well, and some scuffing around the edges. It looks really good, and it's super simple, there's an elastic strap on the back, and then some D-rings which are plugged in to the resin. This is a semi-flexible piece, but still, be careful, it's not a really soft rubbery style piece, which I would have liked, because that way it can move with your knee. This is going to be a little bit rough when you are walking around, but trust me, it has the look, and it really does work a treat with the suit. And here we have the final piece before we take a look at the cosplay reveal itself. I can't wait to show the footage. It's the first time anyone will be seeing it, and I'm super excited. But nevertheless, let's talk about the chest plate here. It is attached to this vest, and so are the shoulder pads. We'll take a look at them in just a second. In the exact same method with the D-rings at the back and the strings, it's super simple and it gets the job done. It's not Velcro, so it shouldn't come flying off. I didn't have to do much to this really, I just added some chrome in the blast holes and I added some chrome to this section as well. I might actually redo this, it's looking a little bit rough and ready for my taste and not in the good way if you know what I mean. Now the scratches over the surface I had to do the exact same thing, I removed a bunch of the silver squiggles, you can kind of see them, they were these little sort of silver squiggle marks all over the place, they aren't so prominent now. But trust me, when I got it, they were definitely there and they looked absolutely horrendous. So you will have to do a lot of scrubbing to get this looking as good as it does. The same thing can be said for the Shore Trooper armor piece here. It looks absolutely sensational, but you can see some of the little silver squiggles here and there. The rest of the weathering though is gorgeous, I really like how it looks. I've done some chrome once again in the blast sections and in the scratches, and I've also sanded away some of the blue just to give it a little bit more of a nasty look. The other side is of course the brown one, and it nicely matches the chest plate there, more chrome in the crevices, and I had to remove the silver squiggles, you guessed it, once again. Some dirt and grime has nicely been sprayed into the crevice there, not by me, but by Excosa themselves. By all means, they did a fantastic job with the bones of the set. The armor pieces and the base paint job is stunning. You'll just have to do a little bit of work behind the scenes to get it to look as good as it can. Now that we've looked at all of the armor pieces individually, we're gonna start the footage of the Mando cosplay. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of it. The season two Beskar Mando cosplay is coming very soon. Let me know if you like the format of this video because it will be what I'll be using going forward, specifically next up with my 89 Batman cosplay. But aside from this, this will be the last time you hear me speak in this video. Enjoy the footage, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.